Hey everybody, Kyle Goat here from GoatFilmReviews.com and the Goat Film Reviews YouTube channel. And we've got another unboxing for you today. I've actually got a, quite a few things that need unboxing and watching over the next couple of week, days or weeks or as soon as possible. So you're going to see a couple new unboxing episodes showing up here. It's been a little while um, with the award season going on. I was really doing some unboxing um, for for some of the Netflix things that I got sent and some of the cool stuff that I thought was worth checking out. But now we're going back to the world of horror. We're going back to the world of Arrow video. And we are gonna be unboxing my copy of Inside the Mind of Coffin Joe. Um, Coffin Joe is somebody who I only recently became aware of. I feel like I'm gonna lose my horror card for this. Um, I think it was Cinemassacre who did a an episode on Coffin Joe for uh, the Monster Madness years ago. And I, I just stumbled upon it and watched it. Um, I found it incredibly interesting, the fact that this, like, character or a version of this character appeared in, like, 10 or 12 movies and that they've been mostly difficult to find because not one release uh, had them. And, you know, it's kind of like when I talk about, like, The Blind Dead um, or a number of other, like, horror film franchises where they're just so disseminated out into the world that getting all the different copies is really hard to do. You know, that happened with Hammer Horror. Um, a bunch of different studios have Hammer licenses for specific films. That's why you can't really get a box set of the Dracula films in America from Hammer or something like that. Um, you have to kind of piecemeal out which ones you can from different studios. Godzilla has another kind of difficulty with that too because some Godzilla films are licensed specific ways, which makes, especially the later films, the post-Showa era, because those are on Criterion, but the post-Showa era gets really difficult to kind of piecemeal out what you need for your collection. So that's kind of the way I expect a Coffin Joe to be, but Arrow Video released this great box set we're going to take a look inside of it. Uh, join us for that. Okay, and as you can see here, we have Inside the Mind of Coffin Joe. This is the Arrow Video box set. Um, just looking again at the side, I've criticized in the past Arrow Video not having the name of the box set, which they have here, thank goodness, and they have every single name of every single one of the films in the set, which again, I also appreciate, but more than anything, the box set name, always appreciated. Over here we have a ridiculously small print on uh, many of the films and special features available in here. Um, and again, just kind of turning around, we have the other side of it also has all that information. Reason for it being that there's kind of a unique visual appeal and that's got the separation right here and how it opens up. It's not just like all the other Arrow video things, um, so it's going to be slightly different. So we're going to go ahead and tear this box open. This is maybe one of my most anticipated box sets to be opening up, to be presenting to y'all, um, because I just strictly did not think this was ever going to be in print in a good, solid version like this. Um, so we pulled off that. Uh, as you can see right here, um, just looking around the side, we've got some back matter, so we'll go ahead and pop that off as well. There's always a sticker there, and it always makes me worried that that's not going to come off correctly. And something I noticed as I was pulling off the back matter is on the other side of it, we have the claws. Um, again, I know very little about Coffin Joe, but I'm such an avid horror fan that like hearing about Coffin Joe just surprises me that I hadn't heard more about it. Um, I've heard of some of the films, like at midnight, I'll take your soul. And I'm pretty sure I've heard of that film before. So there's the front of it. I think this is the front of it. We're going to go ahead and raise that off right there. Oh, naughty, naughty. Um, we'll take another look around as it goes around again. And so on the back, I believe that is the same image. Looks like the same image um, uh, behind the top layer of it. So... And then if you look in the top, we'll see that we've got everything kind of placed in here. Um, it's too bad that the sides maybe aren't open um, so that you can get in and grip better because you kind of have to, you're going to have to probably sidle it over here um, and, and pull out the films you're looking to get. So we'll just maybe take the whole thing, all of it out at once. I'm going to take this box and move it out of the way for us so that we can better look at the things that we have on our list. Um, and let's see there. Okay, and so let's let's look through this kind of portion by portion here. First, we have Coffin Joe Against the World, a really cool looking art book. It's actually a fairly thick book. I know maybe I not see that way in the video here, but um, good production quality, nice thick binding actually for one of these kinds of books. So, um, but who would expect less from Arrow, right? So what we have here is we have the contents. We have um, 
a number of uh, initial essays and pieces about that um, going through the cast and crew as well um, and a number of restoration pieces of information um, nice to have those elements right in the book so that you can look up the cast pretty easily um, and then yeah just some interesting pieces about the series um, and again, I won't go too in depth on this because this is, I mean, the, the fun of this is being able to read through what the philosophy of the Sadian, Libertine, and Coffin Joe. Um, such a peculiar, peculiar series of films. Um, pretty darn cool, though, if I do say so myself. Okay. Oh, sorry, everybody. Let's see here. We also have what appears to be a pretty cool little poster. Um... Hopefully I'll be able to get this all in frame. But yeah, okay, well, for those of you who can't see the whole thing, it's actually just, it's just the front poster and then it's the back poster um, with the claws again. But you'll notice that at the top, it's actually got the head off. So that's the two variations of the poster that's included here. Um, you know, maybe I'll put this up in the on the wall here, but okay. Now let's go ahead and look further into it. So... Again, you might notice one other thing that I just saw kind of looking at this, and that is that, you know, it, it appears just looking at these cases that there's one, two, three, four, five, six films because there's six cases. Um, there's not more than one lettering on there. Um, and I, I believe I know why. So we're going to going to try and look through this kind of piece by piece here. OK, so uh, I, I paused for a second because I really wanted to take a look and see if I could figure out kind of the order because these cases are kind of out of order when you compare them to the side piece. Um, on the actual outer box. So uh, just to break it down for us here, um, this is the one that features at midnight, I'll take your soul. Um, let's go ahead and just kind of open this up to get a better look. So there is on the disc, at midnight, I'll take your soul and the strange world of Jose Mojica Marins. Um, we have the a card from the funeral home, I believe, <laughs> as well as oh, some cool art cards that come with as well. Um, and some upcoming releases, I assume, as well from Arrow. So, yeah, so depending on here, so you'll see the inside of this has At Midnight, I'll Take Your Soul. Um, and then the other slip cover on the other side flipped around is The Strange World of Jose Mojica Marin. So um, we're going to have to go through this kind of, mm, looks like they're about the same, actually. So, yes. So this contains both films, uh, at Midnight I'll Take Your Soul and The Strange World of Jose Mojica Marins. Um, once seen, never forgotten. Uh, Coffin Joe makes his screen debut in Jose Mojica Marins' I'll Take Your, At Midnight I'll Take Your Soul, the first Brazilian produced horror film. Coffin Joe is an undertaker in a small Brazilian town searching for the perfect woman to bear him a superior child. Unable to conceive with his wife, he kills her and sets out to find someone else. Nothing and no one will get in the way of his quest to propagate his bloodline and his only chance at immortality. So on there we have um, a brand new 4K restoration, high definition presentation, lossless mono audio, um, English subtitles, audio commentary from writer, director, and star Jose Mojica Marins, filmmaker Paulo Duerta, and film scholar Carlos Primati. Um, that is in Portuguese with English subtitles. Um, Coffin Joe's Sadian Underworld, a new video essay by film scholar Lindsay Hallam, Damned the Strange World of, Coff or of Jose Mojica Marins, the definitive documentary on the life um, and work of Jose Mojica Marins by Andre Barczynski and Ivan Finotti, Bloody Kingdom, his first short film with the director's commentary, The Adventurer's Fate and My Destinies in Your Hands, excerpts from early works, um, theatrical trailer newly scanned from the original 35 millimeter negative and a reversible sleeve with new commissioned artwork. And again, that's the commissioned artwork for the strange world of Jose Mojica Marins. Um, let's open this up here and see that is our art card um, slip cover for at midnight. I'll take your soul. So as you can see, this one actually is at midnight. I'll take your soul as the main feature and the strange world damned the strange world of Jose Mojica Marins is the definitive documentary on his life and works. So this is where I, I kind of come at it here with something disappointing here is I wish that they had just had a slice down the center and had, you know, two different kind of styles or had like both films listed on here. It frustrates me 
when this is listed as if this is just one film. But then you open it up and there's a disc with two and they've actually got the slice. They did something kind of similar to this, I believe, with uh, maybe the Gamera films um, where it was like you have to choose kind of how you want to play that out. It's, it's frustrating because, again, this is really nice artwork, but that is a frustrating thing for me. So keep that in mind. Um, we'll place these back in there for now the various art cards that are associated with the films, um, including that funeral um, funeral parlor thing as well. Okay, and up next we've got uh, this one right here, which will have a couple different films on it as well. Um, as we can see on the front, it has The Strange World of Coffin Joe, um, and I'll probably just move this box back in just to help us differentiate where we are. So we've, we've covered this one, and we've covered that one. So right here we have the Strange World of Coffin Joe, this one, but it also includes this night I'll Possess Your Corpse. We'll open that up and take another look so we can see a better look. So there's our disc again. Um, and again, it's just confusing, and I wish that they would just put, put the thing in there that's important. And I'll probably put the earlier film on the outside just so I know which disc to go to next. Um, but yeah, we thankfully they did send with some cool art cards again for each of the films. So we've got... Um, this one right here on the outside, and we've got The Awakening of the Beast, um, which is cool. So pop those back in there. And then uh, over here, the success of At Midnight I'll Take Your Soul embedded Coffin Joe in the psyche of Brazil with his iconic long fingernails, top hat and cape, writer, director, and star Jose Mojica Marins became the living embodiment of his creation um, as he became both cultural icon and anti-establishment hero and coffin Joe return to screens this night i'll possess your corpse see the sees the unholy undertaker back in town to continue his quest for the perfect woman embarking on an even more brutal campaign of terror aided and abetted by his hunchbacked assistants we also have the strange world of coffin joe so again two and three Meanwhile, it's an anthology horror film hosted by him, featuring three short films directed by Jose Mo Mojica Marins, which feature a strange doll maker, a necrophiliac balloon seller with a foot fetish, and a psychotic professor involved in sadistic rituals. You know, anything that you'd get on a normal night. Um, 4K restoration of it this night, I'll possess your soul, or I'll possess your corpse, um, and a 4K restoration of The Strange World of Coffin Joe. Let's see here. We also have audio commentary for this night. I'll possess your corpse with writer, director, and star Jose Mojica Marins, filmmaker Paulo Duarte, and film scholar Carlos Permati. Um, again, that is Portuguese with English subtitles. Um, we have an archived audio commentary of The Strange World of Coffin Joe with Marins, Duarte, and Permati. We have Eccentric of Cinema, a new interview with author Stephen thrower examining the early life and influences of jose mojica marins on tonight's horror show a new video essay by film scholar miranda corcoran looking at the, the mythic figure of coffin joe within the canon of horror hosts an alternative ending for the other film the strange world of coffin joe with commentary by marins um, and theatrical trailers uh the two films together we have 110 minutes for this night i'll possess your corpse 82 minutes for the strange world of coffin joe they are in Portuguese, black and white, and in color, and they have English subtitles. So there we have those ones. Okay, and right here we have The End of Man. Um, so that is this film, but again, this one also has The Awakening of the Beast. Again, as I mentioned, it makes it confusing. It's a frustrating thing about this box because the box outside is so cool. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and open this up first. We'll see The Awakening of the Beast and The End of Man. Pull that out so you can see The Awakening of the Beast uh, cover. And then we've got those art cards again. So we've got one from The End of Man and When the Gods Fall Asleep. The, uh, the other confusing thing is that this one right here would go in that case. And this one would go in a different case. It's not the end of the world, but it's just, it's odd. It's odd that they would be packaged in such a way. But I guess that doesn't really take away from anything. You can just fix it yourself. But, all right. Sex, perversion, and sadism abound in The Awakening of the Beast as a psychiatrist experiments on four volunteers with LSD in this surreal examination of 60s drug culture. What starts as a pseudo-documentary featuring a panel of psychiatrists and writer-director Marins, himself as an expert in depravity, soon becomes something much stranger. The second film, diverging from horror towards satirical black comedy, The End of Man sees a naked stranger played by Marins, emerge from the sea to perform miracles in a nearby town and become a modern messiah whose deeds will affect the whole world, but things qu aren't quite as they appear. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we also have here, we have 4K restorations of both films. Um, let's see here. 
audio commentary from the archives um, f- for Awakening of the Beast with Marins, Duarte, and Pramati. Archived audio commentary for The End of Man with Marins, Duarte, and Pramati. The Strange Mind of Coffin Joe, a new interview with author G- Guy Adams exploring the esoteric aspects of Jose Mojica Marins. A Woman for Joe, a new video essay. Um, by Alexandria, Alexandra Heller Nicholas exploring the complex gender politics of Marin's filmography. Alternative opening titles for The Awakening of the Beast, theatrical trailers. Um, and we have a 93 minute runtime for one film and 80 for the other, in black and white in color, in Portuguese with English subtitles. Okay, so up next we see this box right here. So again, we've covered boom, 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 boom. And as we see this one here, The Strange Hostel of Naked Pleasures also includes When the Gods Fall Asleep. So there's the, the outer matter of that one. Um, we'll go ahead and open this up, get a better look at, again, we have the disc there with both the images, and then we have When the Gods Fall Asleep. Again, really cool art uh, work that's being done for this. Both of those, including the Hellish Flesh, little preview of what we're going to see with that disc. Um, who we have here continuing the blackly comic trajectory of the end of man in the rarely seen sequel when the gods fall asleep our messianic cult figure once again played by Marins sets out to right wrongs expose corruption and end the social unrest that he sees in the world it's followed up by the strange hostel of naked pleasures Marin stars as the mysterious proprietor of an isolated guest house where on a dark and stormy night an eclectic group of strangers seek shelter is the proprietor coffin joe why do all the guests watch his freeze at midnight is the hostel even real only time will tell. Okay, that sounds actually really cool. What's, what's confusing is that, and and Coff and Joe aficionados will will mention this too. There's a weird timeline to all these films that I can't 100% explain to you because I don't 100% understand it. As I go through, maybe I'll do a video later on going through the timeline of these films. But right now, it's just there's there's a lot of confusion about that for me. So we have 4K restorations, of course. Um, Let's see what else we have. The Demonic Surrealism of Coffin Joe, a new interview with scholar and filmmaker Virginie Salavi, exploring the parallels between the work of Marins and the European and South American Surrealist movements. Delirium, Surrealism, and Vision, a new interview with author Jack Sargent. Apostle of Evil, a new interview with Denison Ramalho, co-writer of Embodiment of Evil, about his early connection to Coffin Joe. Mohica in the Snow, tonight I incarnate at Sundance, footage of Marin's attending the Sundance Film Festival in 2001. A Blind Date for Coffin Joe, a short film by Raymond Coffin Ray Castile. Theatrical trailer uh, and the reversible slipcover. Again, we have a 78-minute runtime and an 80-minute runtime. They are in color, Portuguese with English subtitles. And one last look at the disc as well all right up next we have hallucinations of a deranged mind where again we left off here this is the outside that's what the inside one's going to look like so we're gonna open that up and take a look inside there okay and we'll remove that so we can see better on that that art card uh is pretty cool there and i will probably again reverse this one just to keep it less confusing as i was paging through it um, we've got the art cards for both films right there and over here we have in hellish flesh writer and director Marin stars as dr george medeiros a brilliant scientist but neglectful husband whose wife takes a lover and plans to murder george for his fortune when the plot fails the doctor is badly disfigured and after months in hospital he returns with nothing in mind but revenge so you'll notice that he plays dr medeiros right there which means it should be noted he doesn't always play coffin joe but these are part of the coffin joe series um again i don't have all the details about that but it, that is what it is here Meanwhile, in Hallucinations of a Deranged Mind, a psychotic doctor driven to insanity by nightmare visions of Coffin Joe trying to steal his wife is helped by colleagues who enlist the creator, Jose Mojica Marins, to convince the patient that he does not exist, but all is not as it seems. It seems like that's a recurring theme there. Um, we've got a 4K restoration on both films. We have um, an audio commentary from the archive for Hallucinations of a Deranged Mind um, with Marins, editor uh, Neil Samar Layart. Duarte and Pramati. Um, we have Aesthetics of Garbage, Jose Mojica Marin's A Complicated Icon, a new interview with filmmaker Andrew Leivold, examining Marin's place in the marginal cinema movement of the 60s and 70s, Beyond Good and Evil, a new video essay by film critic Kat Ellinger, uh, and theatrical trailers. Again, one film is 83 minutes, the other is 84 minutes. This is in black and white and in color, um, Portuguese with English subtitles. So place those art cards in. Again, the actual, like, 
art artistry at place here is really, really great. I just don't love when they do certain things like not having both titles, at least both titles listed there. You could even have in the corner also includes, and that would just be fine with me, but... All right, we've only got one left, so it's easy to figure out which one is left here. Um, we have on the outside there. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Um, as you'll see, we've got Embodiment of Evil is the last one, because this one, as I pointed out, was way up there with that one. So I'm just going to open it up right now and take a look at Embodiment of Evil. That's a cool-looking image, and that image is probably going to end up on the outside, because, again, I kind of prefer the art card style that Arrow Video has to more the traditional looking um, outer matter for that. So um, again, we have the, the final two art cards right there. Um, oh, this one is just going to be for the final film, which isn't even in this box uh, or not in this specific case. And then we have the art card for inside the mind of coffin Joe with a list of the films. Um, but there we have that um, in 2008 coffin Joe returned to screens and embodiment of evil, the official third film in the coffin Joe trilogy which began with that Midnight I'll Take Your Soul and continued with This Night I'll Possess Your Corpse. So part one, part two, part three. What's in the middle? Yeah, we'll, we'll cover it. <laughs> um, released from the mental health wing of Sao Paulo State Penitentiary after 40 years, the sadistic undertaker is back on the streets, haunted by ghostly visions and spirits of past victims, but still set upon the goal that sent him to prison in the first place, finding a woman who can give him the perfect child. Aided and abetted by his hunchbacked servant, Bruno, this time nothing will stop the continuation of his blood. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we have uh, a Blu-ray presentation here, of course, high definition. Um, learning from the master, a new interview with screenwriter Denison Romalo. Uh, Fantasia Film Festival premiere footage, an archival footage of Marins at the film's premiere. Apprenticeship of Evil, an archival interview in which Romalo pays tribute to Marins with Fantasia Fest's um, Mitch Davis. Official making of and experimental making of two archival featurettes about the production, deleted scenes with commentary by Marins, visual effects purgatory, an archival featurette with commentary by Marins, storyboards, a, an archival featurette with commentary by Marins, theatrical trailer, and that reversible sleeves, as we mentioned. This is a 94 minute runtime. It is in color, Portuguese with English subtitles. Um, so there's that as well. Let me grab these and put these back inside there. Like I said, I think it just, in the box itself, everything until you get to like the discs and the confusion around the outside, which, you know, may or may not actually like bother you at all. Um, but that can be something that I get a little irksome with is that they do a good job on production, but I feel like they just don't need to cut corners or is that cutting corners? I, I just find it more confusing than anything else. Um, so we're going to go ahead and place those all in there. Get that right back up top there. And there you have Inside the Mind of Coffin Show. One more thing I want to point out. Coming back in to remind you about one more thing as well. When this box set was initially released, there was issues with the disc that had The Awakening of the Beast and The End of Man. Um, so if you got an early copy of this box set and haven't had a chance to open it, make sure that you have the correct disc or you may have to reach out to Arrow. I had to get the corrected disc for mine. Um, so good important note here, reach out to Arrow if, you're, if you have issues with your Awakening of the Beast disc um, or End of Man. Um, you can look up more information online about that. If you have trouble with that, reach out to me. I'll try to give you a hand if I can, but you will want to replace the disc. Again, I don't fault you know, these companies when they have an issue. Um, as long as they rectify it. And Aero, Aero Video did rectify it. So we can't really get too much faulted on that. It took a while for this to show up. Um, but again, they, it showed up. They, they went out of their way to fix it for me. And you got to give them credit for that. So that is just a reminder of that. So there you have it inside the mind of Coffin Joe. Um, a real fun uh, look inside of this box set. Something I've been meaning to watch for a while. I'm so excited to break into this box set um, and check out the various films. Um, hopefully you got some information on those replacement discs as well. Um, and, uh, you know, if you have any issues with that, reach out to me. I'll kind of try to, to guide you a little bit more. Um, but you can always check out with Arrow as well. Let me know your thoughts on the films, on the presentation. Is this a box set you would be interested in getting? Are these films you'd be interested in viewing? Let me know down below in the comments section. If you've seen them all, which one's your favorite? What should I be looking forward to as I move my way through this series? Um, I would love to hear your thoughts. It's my favorite thing about having this channel is being able to talk with you, the viewer. Um, so thank you all for joining me so very much. You can check out all of my film reviews over at goatfilmreviews.com. 
You can find Goat Friend Reviews on Facebook. You can follow me personally at Almighty Goatman on Twitter. It's always Twitter. Instagram, Letterboxd, and Threads. And you can find my other show, Kyle and Nick on Film, that I co-host with Nick Plotichuk from the St. Paul Filmcast. We have new episodes of that show every single week. I'm also a member of the Minnesota Film Critics Alliance. We've got links down below in the comments section so that you can find, or in the show notes, so that you can find other reviews from other film critics in the Minnesota area. Thank you so much for joining me, and until next time, we'll see ya.